subject of our discussion is current value accounting and general price level accounting as possible alternatives to traditional historical cost. The question before us is how to value assets and determine income so that the resulting financial statements will serve the needs of users outside the accounting entity. Both current value and general price level accounting, or GPL accounting for short, have been discussed in the accounting literature for decades. In the 1960s, academic writings on current value increased significantly, and writers have reached different conclusions in regard to the use of replacement costs, discounted present values, and net realizable values. The literature is a long way from unanimous. In the 1970s, both current value and GPL have been actively debated by policymakers in professional bodies, stock exchanges, securities commissions, and in blue ribbon government panels. Indeed, since 1969, drafts of one kind or another on current value or GPL have been issued in 11 countries. In Chile, the government requires that external financial statements and corporate tax returns employ GPL accounting, and replacement costs are required for inventories. In the United Kingdom and Ireland, the accounting profession has formally endorsed a required supplementary disclosure of GPL accounting, although a blue ribbon government panel known as the Sandalands Committee recently rejected GPL in favor of current cost accounting. A steering group has been commissioned to make a final recommendation. In the United States, the Accounting Principles Board recommended optional supplementary disclosure of GPL accounting in 1969. But in December of 1974, the Financial Accounting Standards Board tentatively proposed that the supplementary disclosure of GPL be made mandatory. In March 1976, moreover, the Securities and Exchange Commission announced that registrants having significant amounts of inventories and long lived productive assets make extensive footnote disclosures of replacement costs. Clearly, current value accounting and GPL are not merely the object of idle speculation. They are high priority topics in the minds of accounting policymakers today. To discuss this controversial and timely subject, we have with us two prominent accounting policymakers, Robert T. Sprouse and John C. Burton. Robert T. Sprouse is Vice Chairman of the Financial Accounting Standards Board. He received the Ph.D. from the University of Minnesota and was on the accounting faculties of the University of California at Berkeley, Harvard University, and Stanford University prior to being appointed to the FASB in 1973. He was President of the American Accounting Association in 1972-73. John C. Burton is Chief Accountant of the Securities and Exchange Commission. He received the Ph.D. from Columbia University and served on the Columbia University accounting faculty prior to being named SEC Chief Accountant in 1972. He was a staff accountant with Arthur Young & Company for four years and as a certified public accountant. Both panelists have contributed extensively to the accounting literature. Neither Mr. Sprouse nor Mr. Burton will be speaking on behalf of the FASB or the SEC respectively. The opinions they express will represent their personal views and judgments and they do not purport to be judgments or conclusions of the FASB or the SEC. Gentlemen, in discussing current value and GPL accounting, there is always implicit uh, a set of objectives of financial statements, but I suppose it's a good idea to get these out in the open and see what they are. What would you say are the objectives of published financial statements? Sandy, what, what do you have to say on the subject? I think the True Blood Report spells out a reasonable set of objectives of financial statements. It says that the principal objective of financial statements is to provide information useful for economic decision making. And I think that is a reasonable starting point. The question of how do you implement that uh, requires, of course, some considerable uh, additional thought and additional articulation. True Blood did go much further than that, of course. I feel that it's important to recognize that accounting statements are designed to provide information as opposed to measuring economic truth, so that I do not see as an ultimate objective the determination of value. I think the statements should be important inputs into decisions by buyers and sellers of securities who do determine value but I don't think their objective should be to present the value of the firm. Well, how do your views compare with that? Well, uh, there, I think, are a large number of uh, users of financial statements that need to be served, but it's impossible, I think, to design 
a single set of financial statements that we typically refer to as general purpose statements that would satisfy all of those needs all of, of all those users. So one has to pick out some primary group, and I would certainly agree that that primary group are investors and creditors. Um, like Sandy, I think the True Blood Report, particularly the, the first, I think it's the first six objectives that they presented are a very good starting point for developing a framework for financial reporting. Well, how then would you translate uh, the statement of objectives into some application of current value accounting or GPL accounting? How do they relate to the objectives as you understand them? Well, I think that uh, if one looks at a system of reporting based upon the current replacement cost of, of goods and services, one achieves a measure which reflects what I would like to describe as the, the long-run average cash flow at the current level of activity. I think that is a useful concept in trying to describe the fundamental concept of earning power. And that's really what, what investors are interested in. They're interested in, in understanding and operations so that they can make reasonable forecasts. And I think that, that a set of financial statements based upon the, the matching of current input costs with current output values in the form of revenues uh, gives a, a reasonable starting point. These would be revenues based on sales transactions, yes. I presume. Bob, well, what would you say? Well, uh, most decisions are a matter of choosing from a variety of alternatives that are available. So if we're talking about investors, typically it's alternative uh, corporations in which they might invest. So it seems to me a very important element is comparability of the information among those corporations. And I think there's very good reason to believe that historical costs do not provide the kind of comparability that's needed to make uh, rational decisions among the alternatives available that uh, some move in the direction of current value and some elimination of the uh, uh, widely varying effects of inflation on one enterprise versus another have to be accounted for in some fashion to improve comparability and in that way assist decisions. But you haven't decided yet, as far as you're concerned personally, whether this might be net realizable values dominantly or replacement costs dominantly or possibly some combination of the two. Uh, not necessarily. I think there's still a great be, uh, deal to be learned before I would be willing to make a very specific judgment as to what uh, the information ought to be, unless one's willing to talk at the very abstract level of, uh, say, the present value future cash flows. If that information were available and the appropriate discount rate, I would think we could all agree that's what ought to be done, but that's uh, really not a uh, practical uh, solution to the problem. I wouldn't even agree with that conceptually, of course, because I think that the, that would argue that if what you were trying to achieve was a, a measure that reflected the present value of discounted cash flows to the firm, you would be trying to determine through the accounting uh, approach the value of the firm, and I don't see that as the, an appropriate, even ultimate objective of accounting, so that I uh, don't think that I could could agree, although certainly in the case of particular assets, it may be appropriate to use that method of valuation to develop an understanding of uh, the nature of the firm and the, the position of the firm at various points in time. Well, you understand as a practical matter, I agree it's not attainable, but if we had certainty of future cash flows and certainty with respect to the appropriate dis uh, discount rate, uh, I can't imagine what other information might be desired in making an investment decision. Sandy, you mentioned replacement costs, and in an article that you had published in the Journal of Accountancy uh, a little more than a year ago, I believe you said that these would be useful because they're an approximation of, of net realizable values, if I understood you correctly, that this is possibly a surrogate for something which would be much harder to measure. Would that be a fair statement, that this is a second best to something which is harder to measure, perhaps? No, I don't think necessarily second best. I think that... Uh it's fair to say that current replacement costs are a reasonable surrogate for, for value. I think it's reasonable to say also that in terms of trying to present a balance sheet, a statement of financial position, that values may be the, the ultimate answer that someone is looking for in the sense of the values of particular assets. On the other hand, in terms of what I think is the more important uh, function of financial statements, which is to develop a picture of operations, 
I am not convinced that, that value-based numbers will give you as good uh, data, as good information, as uh, numbers based upon current input costs matched against current outputs. Mm -hmm. By value information, Sandy, you mean any output values? Is that right? Yeah, I think the values are not reliable. Values I think when one speaks of, of value in an economic sense, it implies output values because that really is the, the source of value is what someone will pay for something. So that you would right. refer to replacement cost accounting as a kind of current cost accounting, but if one used selling or exit prices, this would be a kind of, um, of uh, current value system. That's correct. Do you hold to that now uh, where you really have a choice, uh, a practical choice of choosing between an output value, let's say the net realizable value of some basic commodity, perhaps grain, versus the cost of producing the grain? Or gold would be perhaps the most extreme example. W would you hold to that same view? If, would you use the production cost of gold rather than its market value? If I was trying to measure, if I was trying to measure the operating results of a company whose business was producing gold, yeah. I would use, I think, the, uh, the production cost of gold and compare it with the uh, sales price of gold in terms of measuring the, the success of the enterprise. And you'd, that, you'd value the inventory, though, using that realizable value, presumably. Well, I think that, that really here we're talking about a distinction between a what fits best onto a balance sheet in terms of showing current financial position and what fits best into a statement of operations reflecting the results of the business's ongoing activities. And I think you get different answers. I think if you, if you want to say what is the best picture of a firm from an economic viewpoint at any point in time where one is looking at the assets and liabilities of the firm, I think then it's reasonable to say that, that at least in theory, your net realizable values would be the the most significant. On the other hand, I believe that the most valuable information that accounting gives is not something that tells you the value of assets at a point in time, but rather something that gives you a, uh, an understanding of ongoing operations. And there, I think even conceptually, I would prefer current input values, current input costs, uh, as opposed to a net realizable value figure, uh, simply because I think it reflects long-run average cash flows and is the best predictor. Well, I certainly agree that the measure of operations is the more important, uh, has a greater use. There's certainly no argument there. Uh, you know, using that extreme example, I would use production of gold from the revenue rather than sales of gold, which means that I'd really be recognizing the net realizable value of the gold at the time it's mined, uh, whether or not it's been sold. Suppose you're talking, though, about long-term liabilities or long-term receivables. Uh, would you consider discounting them at the current market interest rate as opposed to the historical market interest rate? That's a very good question, Steve, and, and um, I think that the answer is certainly it would be one that, that has to be considered from various viewpoints. Again, I think that uh, if one is looking at liabilities and one is talking about current replacement cost of liabilities, you are looking to a current market rate of interest in trying to reflect the current replacement cost of, of liabilities. That means, in effect, you should be accruing interest on the current market value of the debt at the current market rate of interest to reflect uh, this measure of, of input values into the productive process. To the extent capital is a, is a cost, it should be at a current cost. Uh, I think you get into a little more trouble on the, on the uh, side of receivables because there you get into problems of revenue recognition, which um, have some other implications.